here with Scott Smith, who is the Enterprise Program Manager and Industry Principal at OSI Soft. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peggy. Glad to be here. So, Scott, let's talk a little bit about the building energy kind of efficiency side of things when we talk about smart cities. There's been a lot of discussion about how effective it's been, and we want to really move towards that. I guess my question is, besides all the discussion of how fast we're moving, are we really moving as quickly to getting more energy efficient buildings and building automation like we talk about, or are we really not getting there as quickly as we talk, or what's the reality about where we are right now? I think there's two parts of that. One is existing buildings, which understanding their financial model doesn't really adopt change that quickly. But when you look at new construction, you do see a, heavily, a heavier influence on some of these smart technologies and energy efficiencies solely for sound financial reasons. Um, you make more money from your tenants when you provide them the level of services that they expect, which is high energy efficiency, high quality of service for their tenants or their employees of the customer's tenants. And so I see new buildings are definitely coming along a lot faster than anything else in the marketplace. So we look at like when we're talking about contractors, what should they actually be thinking about and how can they better position themselves in this smart cities market to be more effective and understand how they're going to play a critical role in how we're developing these smart cities? Well, I think there are several areas of technology in the construction industry you need to focus on, especially in that design phase. Um, and that is what type of technologies make sense for that building. Um, I'm going to give you a few examples. Like I live in Texas and we have a great grocery store chain here called HEB. And when you look at their mission, their purpose, which is providing food and access, and I've seen them lose power recently, it's changed their business model where they have not just backup generation, but they have real full off-grid capabilities around full generation. And so you see what technology supports that business's purpose. Um, EVs are simple. Um, those are growing technologies. Solar is a growing technology to be able to provide some capacity off grid. Um, things like uh, light harvesting are very are, are growing as well as window tinting and other technologies. So it, it depends if, if it's an office space to a retail space, but there's different technologies for different footprints. So are you describing it as it should be more economic or is it really more energy efficiency because you described kind of two things there so it's kind of interesting the way you d talked about it just now i have a view i mean we're all altruistic and want to be energy efficient so don't get me wrong but at the end of the day a business makes financial decisions for their purpose and the two actually meet today i mean buying solar if you did it 10 years ago was so unaffordable there, there wasn't a great financial model unless you have a lot of credits but today it pays itself back um, window harvesting, newer technology, but pays itself back. So I think you take into account, does it have a financial value to your tenant or you as a construction company or a building owner? But it serves the efficiency and sustainability model. So I think they're hand in hand, but we make decisions based on our bottom line as a business today. So where are we talking about the ROI overall? I mean, how do we justify that and where do we find that ROI? It's, it's going to change based on square footage and use cases. Um, we have a customer in a unique building space, uh, baseball, Major League Baseball parks. And most of their ROIs tended to be less than 18 months and a, a greater number less than 12 months. So it, it really depends on the cost and the technology in your place and your, your market if there are grants and refunds available to you. Um, Texas is not a, necessarily a solar friendly state compared to California, where you may have a quicker payback. So I think it's looking at it as whole. But when it comes down to what your what your business is, so pick us, we just built a brand new building. Um, as a software vendor, having a building where developers and support personnel can sit is part of our core mission. So making sure that we have a high availability building. So we've put in technologies around window tinting. We have a framework for solar to go in, generation as well as batteries, all so that we can maintain an environment for our core mission, which is to provide software to customers. 
And it all made sense from a construction and payback point of view for us. So when you look at this, your, your advice to a construction company is really looking at what's the bottom line payback is also what is the energy efficiency that they're going to actually provide to the environment. It seems like it's twofold that you're describing. I think it is twofold, but how, I think it's from a customer point of view, we're a vendor to others, right? And what is something that our customers ask us? Are you energy efficiency? Do you have recycling programs? Do you have a sustainability officer? Those are things that even our vendors want to hold us accountable to. So it's important to our business as well to meet that demand. Um, but I think from a construction point of view, it's, it's a balance. I think as a construction company, you need to know your customer and the market they serve and to find mutually agreeable solutions that bring apart that sustainable answer and provide value to both people, both companies. Scott, I appreciate you spending time with us today. Scott Smith from OSI Soft, thank you so much for all your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that's all the time we have today, but stick around. We've got so much more to come right here on Construct Tech TV.